Good evening and welcome to a special ALSEI event here coming to you from Hub in Melbourne. We're joined by Jennifer Canis, the local member for Melbourne. And uh, two weeks ago, Jennifer put the call out to you to forward your ideas on how to make Melbourne even more livable, but not just even more livable, but livable for all. Uh, we received ideas ranging from tackling homelessness to addressing mental health and improving public transport. Tonight, Jennifer will be discussing these top five ideas as voted by you, and these were also the ideas she'll be taking to the next Premier. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Great to be here at the Hub as well. I was at the City of Melbourne when uh, this facility first opened, so it's great to see it humming along. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, for you at home, uh, you can join the conversation by using the hashtag JKMELB. So that's J-K-M-E-L-B. And uh, for those of you wondering a little bit about, uh, uh, a little more about Jennifer's background, uh, Jennifer lives in Flemington with her husband and their three-year-old son. Uh, she was elected to the Victorian Parliament in July 2012 to represent the people in the state electorate of Melbourne. A former lawyer and teacher, Jennifer served as a councillor at the City of Melbourne, and her portfolios included aged care, youth services, childcare, Indigenous affairs, homelessness, disability services, arts and culture. Jennifer is currently the Shadow Parliamentary Secretary for Mental Health and for Justice, and is a strong advocate for public housing and social justice. So you had quite a Quite a lot on the, quite a lot of experience, which is which is yes. which is good. Yeah, look, um, yeah, council was great. Wonderful. Well, that's it, it's good because our first question uh, ties in with with uh, mm. with that, and it's from Sherry Brunhout. Hi, I'm Sherry Brunhout from Melbourne City Mission, and I run Melbourne's iconic youth homelessness service front yard. Melbourne's in the middle of a youth homelessness crisis. Do you know that dozens of young people are turned away from youth accommodation every night because there's just not enough? The last youth refuge, which provides emergency accommodation for young people, was built over 20 years ago in the metro area. There's never been a youth refuge in Melbourne's CBD. So on behalf of the 6,000 young people who are homeless tonight, Please join with Melbourne City Mission, helping us to secure Melbourne City's first ever youth homelessness refuge. Thank you. I think Cherie touches on a, a really key issue when we talk about livability in Melbourne, is that Melbourne in many respects is a place, a, a tale of two cities. If you, have a, if, you, you know, if you have a job and you have a home, then it is a great place to live. But if you don't, then it's pretty awful. And you know, I've had a long association with, with Front Yard and they do terrific work in advocating for young people, in providing services for young people and in making sure that young people aren't forgotten in, in um, but young homeless people aren't forgotten in, in the policy setting and I, and I think that's one of the really important things that they're doing. Um, I met actually with Cherie and Front Yard about six weeks ago and discussed this issue with them and um, uh, I know that they're doing a feasibility study next year into looking at, at how we may be able to do a, a youth refuge in um, in the CBD, and I'd be really delighted if you know if we do win government to be able to work with Front Yard on on that project and finding a way to make it work. Um, the statistics around youth homelessness are pretty appalling, and something that we really shouldn't um, ever forget. The City of Melbourne do a street count. Um, on, on, you know, it, look, it's only ever a snapshot in time of how many homeless people are in the city, but numbers this year were 50% higher than last year, um, and that's in circumstances where they'd been stable for a long time. So I think it is an issue that we need to um, get on top of and an issue that we really need to, to focus on. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I'd really like to be able to work with Front Yard to, to deliver something in that area and to make it something that, um, you know, young people who, for whatever reason, find themselves homeless aren't then stuck in homelessness for the rest of their lives, that um, they can get the services and the help that they need and the home that they need so they can go on to lead, you know, rewarding, productive and fulfilling lives. Mm. Absolutely. Next question. Uh, with uh, 31 votes is from Rick Clark. Hi Jen, 
My idea to make Melbourne more livable for all is to build the best public transport system in the world. We know that spending more money on roads only means more traffic, so let's spend our money where we can actually reduce congestion on our roads by providing a great public transport system for those who want to use it, leaving less people on our roads for those who need to use it. Very uh, important topic for a lot of Melbourne. Look, it is, and um, uh, the, the question there was filmed at Kensington Station, and I'm really curious to know when it was filmed because there was no one else there, <laughs> which is complete the complete opposite to my experience at, at, at Kensington Station, where it is a very busy hub of transport. Um, and we're really lucky in the electorate of Melbourne that we have a lot of public transport options. The key issue that we have around public transport in, in Melbourne is that it's very crowded when, when it actually gets to mm. the city. Um, people who get on at Kensington often find that the train or is too busy and mm. they can't get on. Um, and one of the key challenges that we're working on is how to increase the capacity of the existing public transport network. Um, and there's a couple of things that we think should happen. One is that we should completely forget about this east-west link. Um, it's not going to solve anyone's congestion issues um, and it's certainly not going to reduce our reliance on, on cars in, in Melbourne and in Victoria. Um, but what we should do is build the Melbourne Metro Rail Link, which is a train line that goes, I guess if you can picture it, from um, Footscray through to Kensington, um, across to the uh, University and Hospital pre Precinct in Parkville, where um, I think the figures are something like 150,000 people work or study or visit every day, and then down through the, the CBD, two CBD stations, and out through Domain to South Yarra. Mm -hmm. And why that is such a key public transport project is that it will um, increase the capacity of um, the city loop. So at the moment the city loop is pretty much at capacity. You can't fit any more trains in, so you can't get more trains running. Um, and so the Melbourne Metro will increase that capacity across everywhere. Mm. Um, the other thing that we um, think that needs to happen in relation to public transport is level crossings. The, mm. the question there was asked at, at Kensington Station and anyone who knows, um, you know, who, who travels on the train or who rides a bike or who drives a car knows that boom gates at some of these, um, these intersections are down more than they're up in um, peak hour. And we can't have more trains because we can't have the boom gates down anymore. Mm. Um, and they also um, have congestion um, for people who want to use the road. So we see that, that as another key um, issue in relation to public transport. Um, and look, those two projects are great for public transport, but they're also really good for jobs and the economy and, and um, you know, creating opportunities for um, people from engineers through to construction workers. Um, but let's not forget two of the biggest public transport um, form, forms of public transport that we have in one, or, well actually they're private transport, they're not public transport, one is bikes mm. and pedestrians. Um, mm. And I think we really need to make sure that we give people safe and accessible options to, to walk and ride as well. Um, I know that I'm a, a very recreational bike rider because I don't like riding on busy um, inner city streets. Um, and I think that if there were safer options for people to ride their bikes, then I think more people like me would, would use you know, bike riding as a, as a way mm. to commute. And now on to our third winning idea, which is from Hannah uh, Wooten. And uh, Hannah's asked me to read out the question on her behalf. Her question is, as a student graduating from university this year, I'm very concerned about the difficult job market I'll be entering. I'm also concerned that with proposed changes to tertiary education funding, I will not be able to afford to educate myself further if I can't find a job with my current qualifications. I think a good, caring and progressive government should improve employment opportunities for people of any age and give people the greatest opportunity to educate themselves and better both their own lives and the wider society. 
Your thoughts. Thank you, Hannah, for your, your question. And um, unfortunately, I'm not surprised that that was one of the, the top questions because graduate unemployment is actually the highest it's been since, um, since the recession in the early 90s. Right, well. um, and so a lot of graduates are finding it very difficult to get work. And I, and I hear that anecdotally, anecdotally and not just through the, through the figures. Mm. Um, and look, a big shout out to the, the students at the moment who, and, and staff who are, um, uh, you know, advocating and protesting about um, the, the fees that Tony Abbott's trying to, to bring in in relation to university because um, uh, I think that while it's a, it's a federal issue, <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uni and having an accessible university course is um, really important. It was one of the the key things that I think changed my life was being able to go to university and complete a number of degrees <laughs> um, and to do that without, um, you know, I had a hex debt but it, it wasn't an unbearable debt. Um, but, you know, Labor has, you know, really been calling on this government to do something about jobs in Victoria and it was the, the Labor Party that in, um, in opposition in 2012 had a jobs plan. We gave it to the Premier and said, you know, here's a jobs plan, do something. And unfortunately the Premier just um, kept on saying there wasn't a jobs crisis at all and that's just not what's being borne out. Um, but we've um, recently announced uh, some key initiatives to get 100,000 more people into work in Victoria. One of them is um, particularly focusing on, on young people and giving employers who employ um, young people who um, have been unemployed some um, tax relief to make it more affordable to employ young people. So that's an incentive mm. for employers. Um, we're also keen to work with, the, there's six, um, I guess, sort of key industries that we've seen for Victoria's future. And when I think about university graduates, they're industries that, that uni graduates, I think, will be keen to work in around, you know, renewable energy, new energy forms, um, around biotech um, and those kind of industries. So industries where there is a great value add um, capacity and those sort of things that Victoria and Melbourne does really well. Mm -hmm. um, we've got one of the, the, you know, the best biotech precincts um, in the world here in Melbourne and we really should be capitalising on that. Um, but the other, I could think the other key thing around, um, uh, around young people and, and employment is not just for university graduates but also TAFE. And TAFE is an area where the state government does have responsibility and funding responsibility. And unfortunately, this state government has cut their funding to TAFE and we've seen um, a number of TAFE campuses close in um, Greensboro and, and Lilydale. And we've um, announced that we're going to put a, a, a TAFE rescue package together that will, if we're elected, that will start straight away. Um, and that TAFE rescue package is over $300 million that will go into TAFE straight away to um, repair the damage that, that's been done with TAFEs being starved for funds. And we think that that will um, really increase opportunities for students to get the skills they need to become job ready.